Thank you, Your Excellencies, members of the Parliament. I am most humbled for this opportunity just to mention that I am aware that there is serious um, issues arising. I was asked by His Excellency just to inform the members on the position of the leader of majority, which to us belongs to us. That case is still pending in court, and you might want to ask yourself how that case will have or will impact on the proposed amendments. First of all, we are saying before the High Court that if you are leader of Azimio, or you are a member elected through Azimio, and for example, members of parliament, and the returns of Form 35 was that you are a Azimio, our position is that you cannot mutate to any other party. So if then you cannot mutate to any other party, then we might then want to ask ourselves, what will happen to the question of the proposed amendment of the demeaning, the one that Professor was speaking about, you are deemed to have left the political party. Number two, just one reaction, is that the question of the Election Offences Act. If then we are saying that we are proposing election offences, there is a question of hosting or who hosts the presidential election server. Because if the server is then to be hosted outside the jurisdiction, how will that law then be applicable? The question of jurisdiction. Number two, on the question of the elections, again, you've realized that most of the election evidence that is needed during election petitions is always in the custody of the IBC. So the question is, if we are amending the Election uh, Offences Act, and you remember that offences is a preserve of the National Police Service, and then we do not propose that during the time of elections, every polling station be a gazetted police station for purposes of collection of that evidence. Otherwise, then our proposal may not have a proper seating. Because who will collect that evidence? Where will the OB be? Number two, on the question of election evidence, you realize that one of the most fundamental documents during election petitions is the post day's diary. The post day's diary is always in the control of the IBC. They lock it in the ballot box, and then the officer says, I need a court order for me to open this ballot box. So, and then you realize, if you go to the presidential elections, we have a very strict timelines. To the extent that you'll not get orders to open that particular ballot box for you to access that evidence. My proposal is that during the time of elections, every political party be allowed to maintain a corresponding Paul's Day's diary. So that your Paul's Day's diary corresponds with the, the, the elections day's diary. And number two, that the elections day's diary should not then be locked in that particular ballot box because you may need it in the next day for purposes of bringing evidence. <coughs> I have spoken about the question of the hosting of the server. Who is going to host that server? Whose property is it? And when I speak about property, it's not the question of the... It's, it's a legal property. Is it the legal, does the legal property belong to the service provider or is it our legal property? Number two and the, perhaps the final one, the question of the declaration of the election results. What is the quorum? The other time we had a quorum of three people saying, you have been elected. We had other people in, in Serena saying, you have not been elected. What is the quorum? How do we determine as to who has the quorum of determining and announcing the presidential elections results? Finally, the last one, the leader of opposition vis-a-vis -vis the proposed uh, the existing structure. The existing structure is that of minority and the majority. We are saying the leader of opposition will represent the interest of the, of the opposition party. Yet the Constitution has not appreciated the, uh, the place of leader of opposition. 
how shall we anchor it without an amendment to the constitution affecting substantive provisions on how parliament is being composed, noting that we either only have majority or the minority. The last one is about the question of the fusion. The fusions of those functions. The constitution has fused the functions of both the majority and the minority. And we are told both the majority and the minority functions is to represent, legislate, and to, 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 super, to oversight. So there is that clear fusion in the constitution. Then the question is, if today, Honorable Sabina Chege says, I am now affiliated to Azimio, so to, to Kenya Kwanza, will that be deemed as a defection when the function is fused? Thank you. Thank you very much.